Okay, welcome everyone and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about today the smart way to create custom apps. We're going to be looking at some of the apps that other law firms have produced uh, and exactly how you guys can start to get to grips with uh, using Fliplet. Uh, because it's on Zoom, all of your microphones have been muted, so apologies for that. You're just going to have to listen to me for the next kind of 45 minutes or so. Uh, however, if you do have any questions, then please do use the chat feature. If you want to ask them anonymously, then please send them through to my colleague Noah uh, on a private message who will ask them during the Q&A session at the end. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, kick off straight away with uh, looking at what we're going to cover. So as I said, I'm going to give a very quick introduction. I know we've got lots of people on the call. Some are already using Fliplet and are here just to catch up on, uh, on some of the latest things that uh, other firms have been producing. Um, but also some brand new customers who haven't seen us before. So I will give an overview of Fliplet, some of the most common features that we have included within our platform. But I want to spend the majority of the time looking at the apps that other firms have produced. And so you can get a feel for how they may fit into to your commercial um, kind of firm. Uh, but also I want to give a demo um, and we're going to change it up a little bit today. I'm going to put you guys in the control of what app template I use to demo. So be ready when the poll comes up a little bit later on, you get to choose and I'm going to give you a bit of orientation and talk through how you would use Flipbit Studio using the app of your choice. And then finally, we'll go through uh, some questions. And if we've got time, we'll unmute everyone and we can have a bit of a discussion as well. So prefab, what is it? What does it mean? Um, prefab basically means that we've all the components have already been pre-built. You just need to pick them up and drop them into the app whenever you need them, wherever you need them. Developers are fantastic and developers love doing the technical part of apps. You wouldn't ask an artist, to you know, paint your walls if they're an artist, if they're Picasso, if they're, if they're that kind of talented person. They want to do the skilled work that adds the pizzazz to, to, to an application or a painting. They don't want to be recoding a login screen multiple times. They don't want to be rebuilding a document storage or security aspects. So we take care of all of that. We pre-build it. It means whether you're a developer or whether you're a a novice, but you know how to turn the computer on. You can understand how applications work and the features that you want to include. Nine times out of 10, the feature that you want is already there. You're just going to pick it up. You're going to customize it so it's on brand uh, and you're going to, going to add the content that actually is the bit that makes it valuable. So we try to save people time from programming and, and developing the same features over and over again. Whenever you use Fliplet, everything works on every device. So you haven't got to build it three times. Back in the day, you'd have to decide, are you building this to go on a, a, an Android phone, on an iPhone, or on the web? Well, now you get them all automatically out of the box. You don't need to do anything. They are just there available. You just choose where you want them to be distributed. Everything built, as long as you adhere to the public app store rules, then you can produce apps and put them into the public app stores for your clients, or you can use them internally uh, by launching them via your enterprise app store. This is normally as part of your MDM solution or mobile device management. Of course, we also do web apps. Uh, there are loads of options out there to produce no code web apps. We are just another one. The difference is with us, you build a no code web app, but you could also use it as a mobile app. A lot of other solutions out there are web app only. Obviously loads of features uh, and benefits to using a native app on your phone, which I'm sure you guys can look into. Also to distribute it, you can just send someone a file download. So no matter how you produce your app, we can get it out to your intended audience. Each of the apps, if you choose to turn it on, has built in analytics all the way down to the individual user. So you can really get a good sense of what parts of the app are most valuable uh, and what parts maybe you need to tweak or you need to do some promotion on. The key bits, especially when it comes to an IT focus side of Fliplet, is that we take care of all of the maintenance. That means for you guys, you only need to concentrate on the content and what's valuable within that content. We take care of all the maintenance, making sure that when iOS do another update as year on year without fail they do do, it's our job to make sure that your apps work on every device all of the time. We give you the content management system so that you can very easily upload content in, whether that be by dynamic lists driven by Excel spreadsheets or whether you've integrated into on-prem SQL databases via APIs or data integration service, however you want to pull that data in. And of course, 
enterprise grade security. We, we currently work with over 50 different law firms, 50 of the top 200 law firms in the world. We also work with companies like Deloitte and Accenture who regularly test us uh, for security every six months without fail. So we have to ensure that we uh, abide and, and we can cater for all of your security needs. So how does it work? Well, we want to encourage anyone to be able to produce applications. So we have a very visual studio. You can see here that this is very different to a lot of other solutions out there that are um, classed as low code. If you look at some big ones, there's OutSystems, there's Mendix, there's Appian, all of these are not as visual. They're more about building the logic, as in you would add a, a, a box that says this is your login screen or when people log in, then the next stage in the journey, almost like building a workflow rather than designing an app. We spin it on its head and say, well, actually the UX side of it, the look and feel of an application is just as important as how it works. And we want people to get a feel of how that flow happens. So we enable people to visually build their application. The actual plugging it in and getting the content in almost comes secondary to the look and feel to understand whether there's going to be value there. And it speeds up. Putting something in the hands of the people that are going to use the app as soon as possible is much better than having a diagram that shows them what an app could look like. It's very hard for people to visualize. So for no non-developers or, or people who are less technical, they can use this drag and drop, picking up icons, dropping them in, picking up different components, dropping them where they need them, adding new screens. Perfect. But you'll see the little box that are, or the little red dot circle that I've added there. If you was to click that button, you get access to all of the underlying code. So if you are more technical and you do want to add or build on top of our platform, well, we make it very easy for you to do so. So it's no code to start code if you want to and if you want to do more with it the option is there just don't waste your time rebuilding similar components over and over again and then having to maintain them doesn't make any sense if you don't know how to write code from scratch but you do understand what you want something to do we have a code library this means you can just click in find a piece of code for whatever it is you're looking for maybe it's a trigger so that when someone clicks this button something happens great you go on you can copy and paste a little bit of code and paste it into that developer options and there you go it will work it also is a way to kind of encourage you to to understand a little bit of code as well if you're that way inclined that's all i'm going to talk about with regards to who we are and how it works hopefully if you do have any questions on that please post them through to noah he can come uh, answer them uh, ask me at the end uh, or if not we can set up a call and i can take you through more but hopefully that gives you a good basis of who flip it are and what we do so now let's have a look at some of the common features included in enterprise apps so the most standard things are people are looking to uh, as a communication tool that's generally what a phone is so newsfeed is the first one this can be whether it be for client uh, news lots of marketing teams are using this to to uh, support or to complement their um, monthly weekly daily insight emails because once it goes into that inbox never to be seen again whereas when it's on a news feed that is searchable people can then quickly find that information things like messaging storing documentations having forms data input data collection all of these are all been pre-built and these are absolutely standard you can go into any uh, of the templates that we have or even use a completely blank template and just drop these in customize them and they'll be ready to use but we do go a step further than that. Now firms are getting, they're understanding the power of, um, of, of mobile and actually how and when people need to access information. It's not always when they're sat at their desk. But now lots of people are sat at their desk, but it's at their kitchen table or they've got their kids running around in the background. Who knows? Being able to give people the ability to either use their desktop computer or use their mobile to get the answers that they need is so empowering and more and more being expected by clients and by employees so here you can see just a few of the more custom things that clients use so decision trees uh, quizzes especially for training things like that checklists uh, and calculators excuse me um with regards to i know that a few of you got a notification saying that this webinar was going to be covering um, optimizing business processes with apps that was actually a webinar that we did last week and you can find in uh, on our website at fliplit.com forward slash webinars 
So you can go into detail, but I thought I'd just cover off a couple of quick bits with regards to workflow and the, the capabilities that we have. So if you are looking for a workflow solution, whether it be for optimizing internal processes or to work uh, more closely with your, with your clients, well, you can use an application, whether it be web, on phone or on tablet, to collect data. That data can then be enriched. A lot of people integrate with things like Neota Logic, really powerful, great AI platform. So you can collect data via the app. You might want to send it off to get enriched via another platform or another piece of software. It can then be brought back into the app. Users can be notified of updates, changes, whatever. You get all the reporting of what's happening, where things are within that workflow. The finalized export can be sent via PDF or, or Word, Excel, however you want it being sent. Uh, and of course, you can have the different management workflows. So I've, I've got one I can talk about later on. Expenses is a quite simple one. You input your expenses, you take photos, you add your picture of your receipt. It can then, when you submit it, your, not your manager get that, gets notified to say that you've submitted your expenses. The management can get a reporting tool that summarizes all of the expenses that have been submitted by their team exported to be able to send through to the account team to pay and to record all the expenses and the manager can go in and, and approve or decline your expenses really simple example but we have that already built in the template available right now another example is you can see here really simple but a client may request an nda so they would input their, their request via a mobile or, or web app that may get reviewed initially by a paralegal who then sends it on to a lawyer it then sends it back to the client who either accepts it or sends it back. The lawyer then reviews it again, sends it back, and that can keep going in a loop until the client accepts it. At that point, it's sent back to the maybe the paralegal who then can send it through to the client and, of course, onto accounts to send a, a bill. So things like that are really simple, commonly done by our clients. So again, if you've got any questions in regards to workflow, please post them through to Noah and we will get to them a bit later on. But I think this is the part that most people are here for, and this is to understand, well, how are other firms using Fliplit? What apps are they producing? Because although we feel like apps are potential solution for us, we really need to know where we're gonna get value. So let's have a quick look at uh, what some other firms are doing. So crisis response is huge, and it's huge right now for many reasons. A crisis isn't just things like a dawn raid or a cyber attack. A crisis could be environmental, it could be a pandemic. It's just a way to advise the people that either you work for or your clients how they should respond. And a number of firms are building applications to support these processes. Whether they be generic, whether they be just standard kind of generic information that you would give to any client. This information is probably already on all of your websites. You can also customize it. So you can say to a client, well, here's that generic one, but actually if you want it to be um, including the custom advice and processes that we've set out for you, then absolutely you can build them a custom app just for your individual clients. You'll notice in the top right here, um, I've got uh, icons all of these apps or the majority of them are all accessible in the public app stores so if you went and found the Hogan Lovell's uh, crisis leadership toolkit you can go in you can download it you can have a play and see what they've included within their app the majority of them don't require a login but of course some do other types of applications you can see here clip a chance to produce one uh, regarding litigation Deloitte had a tax app uh, the tax one is interesting because it is in multiple languages. They have it in Arabic as well as English. Uh, and BLM, a UK firm, built a health and safety app. All of them, many features, but if you did have a look at each of them, you will see that in many ways they had very similar features. So a lawyer directory, being able to find the person that you're looking for, information around uh, that particular subject, a news feed, quizzes, tests, a way to, to acknowledge and, and educate your client base. They're all included within all of these apps, they're just different subjects. Scadden built a political law app, this was a number of years ago, and actually during a recent um, uh, round table that we ran with them, they said that buying Fliplit was cheaper than it, the cost of printing the materials needed for their political law clients. So actually they saved money by buying tech because they reduced on their printing costs of sending them the, re, you know, the paperwork about political law. Uh, Crowell and Maureen built one for the government uh, contract part of their business. 
and Chrome 11 recently launched the adver advertising litigation. It just goes to show that no matter how niche a subject is, or, or you know, you can you can build applications now to support very small numbers of high value clients, or to cover a wide section of the general public. Uh, these are becoming more popular, so client and staff portals, uh, enabling your staff to be able to log in and get access to certain information or enable your clients to access uh, information about your firm as well. Firms are always looking to cross-sell. They're always looking for ways that they can get more business out of their existing customers. But if you, don't, if you make it hard for them to find out the capabilities of your firm, then you make it harder to get that cross-sell opportunity. So having things on their phone that they can very quickly access, news coming through that can tell them about potential things that are of interest and where you can really target their interests and make sure that they're only getting stuff that's relevant to them, put it on their phone, get that push notification to acknowledge and, and, and make them aware of the news that you're sending out. Another email, because everyone's now remote, even more emails are being sent than ever before and inbox is getting even more full. So how do we get away from emails? This is one solution. A US firm very quickly to respond to the COVID crisis, they built a COVID state tracker. So state by state in the US, they could click on and very quickly gave the information regarding how that state has been impacted. This was produced within a matter of weeks and was live, ready for their clients to use. That's the power of having a no code platform. It means that they didn't have to wait for developers, they didn't have to write a business case, they didn't need to, to scope it out uh, and do wireframes. They literally built it as they went, got the information, feeding in from another source, and the app was ready to launch very, very quickly. A lot of firms, they, or a lot of solutions will charge you on a pro app basis, and therefore it does become hard to scale. Fliplet doesn't do that. Fliplet offer unlimited app plans. You can build as many as you want, and that allows firms to build out suites of applications. And once you start to understand the value and where this fits into your kind of marketing and also your technology stack, that's really when you can start saying, okay, well, emergency response is one thing, but actually, if you break that down, dawn raids and the advice given for dawn raids is very different to a cyber attack or very different from the first response for another type of attack. So why don't we have separate ones? Why don't we have ones which are really simplified? And if you think about why apps are used, think about the apps that you have on your phone, think about your, your banking app. You can't do everything on your banking app that you can do on the website. Your bank app is there for a specific reason, and that's to check your balance and transfer money. That's really all you can do. So if it's more than three clicks or swipes away, your app's probably getting too big. So keep it simple. You never want to have to train someone how to use an app. That's kind of the golden rule. It should be a case of you open it up and it's so self-explanatory, so obvious that everyone is actually encouraged to use it because they get it. So Clifford Chance, as an example, have built a number of applications. These are the ones from the public app store. Of course, there are others that are used internally, but you can see these for yourself by looking into the app stores. Another firm, uh, these, uh, Evershed is one of our largest clients. They've been with us for a number of years and they've built a number of solutions. This is a really good one if you are looking at producing client facing solutions. So I do encourage you, go onto the App Store now on your phone, um, type in Evershed and you will see this uh, Global Employment and Pensions Guide. You do not need to log in, you don't need to give any information, it's purely there uh, for marketing purposes. Go onto the Compare feature and you will see that it's it narrows down into specific aspects of global employment. You can choose what aspects, and then you can choose how you want to compare that. And they've allowed you to compare it in different jurisdictions and different countries. That All of that functionality has been built by Eversheds, not by their development team, but by the people that understand employment and pensions. The application is available across all the devices, and you can have a look. But look at some of the other features that are in there. There's things that are really making that brand uh, and that, that companies stand out uh, to their clients. A number of other solutions that they've produced, and I'm able to talk about these because they've publicly um, um, done, done press about them. So first of all was work allocation. This was about, well, new work comes in. Previously, they were using a spreadsheet to understand the, the capacity of their 
fee earners. So who had time that we could allocate to a new project that's come in? They replaced it with a mobile app. Everyone had on their phone. As soon as a piece of work came in, they could very quickly search and filter down to the exact person that they're looking for to be able to pick up the phone and say, great, I need you to join me on this piece of work. It replaced the spreadsheet and was rolled out across the organization. On the client facing role, they built a client helpline, they called it. It was simply an opportunity for their client to have one space for them to log all of their advice requests for all of the law firms on a panel. So Revisheta was only one of the firms, there may have been four or five other for law firms on that client's panel, um, but they built them a platform. It was nothing more than a form as part of a web app. But that client was able to go into the same URL, the same form, no matter who the advice request was for, fill it out, click send, and the software did the hard work. And it was coded by the client that worked close, sorry, the partner that worked closely with the client. And it was simple with statements. So if it was a case, of, if it was in regards to employment law, then send that advice request to firm A. If it was in regards to real estate, send it to firm B. But the client loved it because it was so simple. It's like, great, I no longer have to think about which firm do I, should I be contacting, who should I be contacting. It was just one place and the technology did it all. And once they built that solution for one firm, they were able to duplicate it, change the, the, the simple kind of custom if statements, and then they could give it to the next client within minutes. Staff and client support, as we mentioned, a bit like them portals. Client conversations was all about putting all of the firm's capabilities into one place in a summarized kind of elevator pitch format. Why did they do this? Well, they understood that partners knew their practice area really, really well. They wasn't necessarily up to date with all of the technologies and the capabilities of the firm outside of their practice area. So it was very difficult to refer business to other parts of, of the organization. So they built this application that meant if you're going to speak to a client, everything you need to know, any question that comes up, more than likely the answer is gonna be in this app and it's in the palm of your hand all of the time, always up to date. And one of the most recent ones was the open house. So because of COVID, they kind of took the opinion that, yes, it's all well and good enabling them to work from home, but what about the social side of work? What about the mental health, the wellness, then relationships that you used to have when you was grabbing a coffee, when you bumped into someone in the corridor, how do we maintain that culture side of Evershed? So they built this open house app. From idea to launch was 10 working days, which was pretty damn impressive. In their first week of going live, it had engagement for over 800 people. After two weeks, it was well over a thousand people who were engaging on a regular basis with this app. The most popular part of the app was the furry animals section where people would take pictures of their dogs and cats and whatever else and post them. But it built so many relationships because all of a sudden there was a partner who maybe you've never spoken to before working in a completely different office to you, but suddenly they've posted a picture of their chihuahua and you've got a chihuahua and that suddenly you've got something in common, you've got a relationship, it's great. People have actually found that they've got better relationships because of this app than they had in the office because the office was always, you know, there was, there was a, you needed to have a reason that you, you, you would uh, reach out or talk non-work related topics. So it's designed specifically for anything non-work related, but also sharing advice on mindfulness and working from home and best practice, all of that. They've done a load of press on it, so please do have a look at, at what they're doing, they're doing there. So, Hopefully that's given you a bit of a spectrum as to some of the things that firms have been producing. Um, if there's any that have jumped out you and you want to learn more about, then again, push it through to narrow and we can come back to it. But we have just launched a poll. So I'm about to do a live demo. I'm going to jump into the studio, pick a template, and then show you how it works and some of the features. But I want you guys to decide which one you would like to see. So uh, if you can vote now, if the poll didn't automatically come up, then there should be an icon at the bottom that says poll and you can launch that. And uh, we can see, I'll give it 50% uh, have already voted. Let's see if we can get a couple more. Okay, so return to office seems to be popular. Um, we did just do a webinar, in fact, two webinars in the last week on the return to office app, but I can, I can use it if that's what you guys wanna see. Anyone else? Okay, so it looks like, uh, yeah, Return to Office had the, the most votes, so I guess that's the one that I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be showing.
So let me come out of here and let's Let's jump into the studio. So you've chosen the return to office application. So let's go down to here and use the return to office template. Now, I must warn you, the return to office template isn't currently available in the free account. So if you already have a free account or even a paying account, you won't find it in your templates that are uh, available. However, by the end of the week, you should do. Um, we are working on it day and night because we have so many clients who are badgering us to, to get this application uh, up and running. So what I'm going to do first of all is give a quick uh, introduction to Fliplit Studio and then I'll run through some of the features of the app and how you would go about customising it. So first of all, I've jumped into preview mode. So at the top here, we've got edit and we've got preview. Preview gets rid of all of the editing tools and allows you to play with the app. Uh, to get a feel for how it works. So this is great for uh, agile testing. As you go, you can build a screen, test if it works, move on to the next one. Uh, we can view this on lots of different devices. So this is uh, an iPhone 6, but we do have people that have the new flashy phones with the notch at the top. So you may want to test it on that. There's people that are using tablets. I spoke to a law firm, that I'm sure they were just showing off, but they said that all of their fee earners have surfaces, very posh, um, but also desktop. So because we're building this once, we can see how it looks on every device. If we want to play with this on our phone, because although this is good for testing, actually it's, it's much better to get a feel for it on the phone as to where these buttons actually are. So you can do that by downloading Fliplit Viewer. This is a testing tool that we have in the public app stores. What you can do is you build your app on here, but you use your same login credentials to log into Fliplit Viewer and you'll be able to then download this app and play with it on your phone like a native app. And you can also share it with your colleagues. So once you've built an app and you want to share it to get someone else's feedback, you simply type their email address in there and you can choose what level probably preview so that they just get to look at it. Simple as that. So that's how you would play and edit, uh, sorry, and preview your application. Let's jump into edit mode. So over here on the left hand side, this is if you've ever used uh, PowerPoint, it's very similar setup. So each one of these you can think of as a different slide or a different screen. So we've got the onboarding, we've got our terms, login screens, registration menu, and you can see you can build this screen by screen. Over here are all of the components. So these are different components that we've used. So this one you can see we've been sliding backwards and forwards. That's the slider. All we've done is drag that in and then we have customized the text and the images being shown on it. If we go to another screen, let's go to the menu screen. These are going to be showing different lists. I bet my kids are on the internet, that's why this is slow. But you can see this is just nothing more than, than a list. You can see the highlights so I can edit and change bits and pieces on there. So I've got lists of various different styles, buttons and accordions, all the way down to even single sign-on. You can just drag and drop where you want to include your, your single sign-on. Lots of tools over here to add additional new screens. So if you have an idea and you think, right, I want to add a new screen, of course, we've made it simple again and we've pre-built lots of different screens to help get you started. So you can have a, a, a kind of whiz through and look at the different styles to see what really uh, is going to work for you guys. Uh, of course, you can just choose a blank screen with absolutely nothing on it and build it from scratch. I think one person did ask for a blank. So I'm going to choose a blank screen. I'm going to add it to this return to office app. I'm going to call it test. Excellent. So you can see now on the menu, I've now added this new screen called test. And there's absolutely nothing in there at all, but I can start adding things in. So over here, I'm going to grab an image first. And I'm just going to drag it over and yeah, I'm going to place it at the top. It's then going to ask me, OK, well, great. You've asked for an image. What image do you want to include? And of course, you would have uploaded because you have a file manager, all of the different images that you may want to uh, include in your in your app. Once you've done that, you can, I'm just going to choose whatever that image is there. 
fantastic. We can go in and we can start to manipulate that image as well if we want to. So we can start playing around without having to use any, uh, any coding. Uh, we can start playing around with the margins, the height. If we can get it perfect, if we want it slightly off center, border shadowing, all of that can be done. The great thing with this as well is if I have a look at that on phone, I think, yeah, that looks great on tablet though. Yeah, okay, I'll get away with that. Actually on desktop, no, it's too big. I don't like it like that. You can see these images are changing each time. You can customize the view for every different device. So even though it's the same app, you may have it that this is you know, automatically going full width on a, on a phone. However, when you're doing on tablet, I don't want full width. I may want to set it to a certain number of pixels. So you can see here, no, I only want it that big if it's on desktop. So that's done. Easy as that, but when you look at it on different devices, it can be exactly as you had it before. Um, let's just go back to phone view. So in this application, um, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing because just, there are other webinars on how to use this, but some of the key features within it, you can see each, each part is editable. So as it highlights in orange, you can go in and you can change. So if I wanted to update this list to say, what are the symptoms? A new, a new symptom came out. It'd be very easy for me to go in and just update the text within this box. Once it loads, I do apologize for the slow internet. I'm pretty sure that, uh, yeah, half past four, kids have finished uh, their homeschooling and are now uh, constantly watching YouTube. Maybe we'll come back to that. I think you get the idea of how being able to drag uh, and, and drop your certain aspects in uh, within the, the different aspects. Um, if I did want to change this, you can see that I can just add in number eight and it might be whatever the new, uh, the new thing is. Uh, we've also got the layout for each of your screens. So if you ever used a web builder, uh, uh, something like Squarespace or Wix, you can say you have these different containers and then boxes sit within them containers. It makes it really easy uh, to really customize the, each of the screens within your app. A lot of people are worried that when you're using a no or low code app builder, you don't get the same level of customization as you would do if you were coding directly from from scratch. Well, we've never really found an instance where we haven't been able to cater for what people are looking for. So you can see here that uh, obviously one, the, the container compartments that are allowing you to manipulate the different structures, um, but also the theme appearance, being able to put in the hex code for every single aspect of your application to ensure that it's on brand. We are even able to have your uh, custom font if you want to include that as well. Apologies, this is this is so slow. I guess everyone gets used to it, don't they? Because it's the joys of working from home and having to put up with home Wi-Fi rather than the high speed stuff we're all used to in our offices. Um, I'll wait to see if that can if that can load. There we go. So you can see you've got all of the, the different colors that we can set and you can put in to get the exact color that you're looking for. And then you've got every different individual aspect of the app that you can start to customize every single part of it. You've then got different menu options. So this will allow you to choose, are you gonna be using like a, we call it a hamburger menu that's in a certain position. If you want icons that show up along the bottom for easy, quick navigation, you get to choose, they've all been pre-built for you. You've also got all of your data. So where is your data being stored? If someone is completing a questionnaire, if they're adding in additional information, all of that information will be stored within the data sources that are all encrypted within Fliplet. Fliplet use AWS servers in the UK and in the US. So your data can be stored where you need it. If, of course, you don't want data to be stored on Fliplet servers, then, of course, we can do an integration so that the information can be passed directly to you uh, back onto an on-prem uh, data source. File Manager, we've already talked about. This is uploading all of your PDFs, your videos, your web, uh, web addresses, your, 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 your images or, or 
presentations, everything can be stored in there and it is unlimited storage. You've got all of your app settings. So this is your security. What is your icon going to look like? Do you have a custom font? All of this kind of stuff, even to the point of getting the template. So once you've customized one app, you can set it as a template, which makes it super fast for the next person going in to build an app for your particular firm. You can just choose and automatically get all of your brand colors and themes added. Who else are you collaborating with on the app? This is key. No one wants to work in a silo. So you can very quickly say, look, these are the people that are working on the return to office process. Therefore, let's use the app. Uh, sorry, let, let's add all of the people into uh, that are working on this app so we can all work on it together. Uh, I mentioned before about the developer option. So you can see on this particular screen, what's the code that actually sits behind it. And on this case, you can see that there's quite a bit of code sat behind it that you haven't had to write. We've done it for you. But if you want to manipulate it, if there's something that you don't like and you, you want to change, then you can go into this screen and you can update and change it. Or as I mentioned before, you can look at our code library. So by clicking on here, it opens up a new screen, takes you to uh, the code library where you can now go in and say, oh, I'm looking for something that's gonna you know, have, have some effect on the appearance or whatever section and you can get that information. Um, that would be a simple, uh, it's a it's custom style, multiple components. You would be able to go in and you would copy and paste all of the text within there, paste it to where you need it, and therefore it would then update on that particular screen. Cool. Uh, what else? Let, let's... Uh, I think that's given you the updates on all of the sections down here and how to navigate. Of course, there is help sections. So there are videos to help you get started. You can chat with our customer success teams, look at our documentation or another shortcut to our code library here. Uh, if we just go through a few more of the features of this particular app, because it seemed to be popular with people. So as I mentioned, we had the onboarding. This just explains why this app is being built. How do you expect your users to use it? So in this case, it's, we're going to be returning. So now you can use this app to book a desk. You can check the status of your colleagues. So are your colleagues working from home, working from the office? Are they, are they not working at all? If you are going to the office, you can check in and check out uh, really quickly to make everyone aware and, and allow the office managers to ensure that there aren't too many people in the office at any one time and obviously generally help you to keep safe and sharing support. So I'm gonna jump past the different, um, you know, we have included terms for people to agree for privacy. There is a login or there's a single sign-on login and some instructions for how to uh, install your application and also how to upload the data um, in order to populate it. I'm just gonna jump straight to the menu, just to give a quick run through of uh, how the application is gonna work. Hopefully it's gonna go a bit faster than it has been so far. In here we've added a news feed. This can be news either related to COVID or just office news that you wanna get out to all of your employees. Guidance, we've included just simple guidance from the UK uh, regarding COVID, but you may want to customize this uh, for your own staff. We've also had if people want to ask questions. So are there concerns or questions that people may have? So a kind of an FAQ section. We have a directory. This is to tell people exactly where they're gonna be and who's gonna be working. So lots of people well, typically be in a demo. I did say it wasn't live yet or finished, but you'd have a directory uh, with all of your staff available in there. What we uh, are gonna be using this for and how that gets populated is by having people set their own statuses. So in here, and if I zoom in a little bit to give you a bit more view, you can see here it's, uh, have you got any symptoms? Be aware, here's the symptoms that I mentioned and there's the extra bit that I added in. But this is about me planning my week. So I think this next week, uh, I'm gonna go to the office on Monday, but now I'm gonna work from home, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and yeah, I'm gonna not work on Friday. We've included these questions, you can take them out if you don't want them, but have you had any COVID symptoms? No, I haven't. Do you live with anyone that's had COVID symptoms? No, I haven't. 
No, I don't. And is there any additional notes that I may want to make? Now, your office manager would be very interested in this information because if you tick yes, you may want to have a pop up that says, are you sure you should be traveling? Are you sure you should be coming into the office? Um, but some firms have said they don't want to include that for GDPR or CCPA reasons. But and then you would submit that information then becomes part of your profile. So anyone looking can kind of say, oh, I wonder if uh, if uh, Mike's going to the office on Monday. Oh, I can see he is. Well, I won't go because my desk is opposite his and I wouldn't be able to sit at the desk opposite him. Once you've noted where you're going to be, you want to obviously book um, book a desk. So in here you would have. Um, manage your booking. So I can say, yeah, I want to book a desk in the London office and mm, let's pick one that actually has something in. Paris office, yeah, I want level 11, brilliant. Uh, the date, yeah, that date, going in at eight, finishing at six, it's just me. And, you know, I have an urgent court case. So then I can request a booking that goes through to the office manager. If there's capacity, if there are desks available within the limits that would have been set by the office manager, your request will automatically be approved. If it's over, it will automatically go onto a waiting list. But of course, your office manager would be able to go in. So if you had something approved, but someone else came in and said, I really need to go to the office, the office manager could change uh, that booking for you. Once you get to the office, if your booking has been approved, you can check in and check out. A lot of firms have asked for this, so obviously this won't work because we're not on a phone, but on a native phone, this will open up your camera. Your camera is then used to scan a QR code that your office manager would have printed and posted at various spaces within your firm. So very much a kind of, you check into the office, you check into level 11, you may check into a particular zone or area within that really important to help firms to understand where you've been especially if you come down with symptoms they need to know where to go in and clean and, and who to advise in order to, to self-isolate if you have got symptoms who have you been near uh, of course you can check in manually as well uh, a list of offices that may not load because they are still playing with it let's see Uh, lots of other admin features for each of the office managers. So you only need to have one app and each office manager will manage their particular office. So the London office, the New York office, all that information can be collated though. And at any point, uh, the admins are able to see uh, the full capacity of who's in their office at any one particular time and what their booking status looks like on a particular date. So they will get this kind of data kind of at any point. Great way to manage and report. We don't know what level of uh, reporting is going to be necessary once lockdown ends. So being presumptuous and, and assuming that you're going to be able to evidence that you've stuck to uh, the rules of, of social distancing. I think that's enough of uh, talking about that application. Again, please, if you do have questions, please post them through. Um, but I'm going to share with you a couple of new templates that are coming out. One you've just seen because that's the return to app. That's going to be out very, very soon. We're hoping by the end of the week it will be available to everyone to be able to go in and start to customize. Um, we've also just launched our expenses app. Um, we talked about this earlier on, but a great easy workflow. It means that you don't need to have a full new accountancy software platform. This is just it just replaces the, the, the end user experience to be able to log their expenses in a really easy way and the manager to easily approve them without having to have multiple pieces of paper and people scanning or sending hard copies of receipts in. It can all be done and all the reporting is done for you as well. What have we got coming soon? So we are still working. We were delayed. I know many of you have been asking for the training app. The training app is coming, but because of COVID, because of the return to work app, we've had to kind of cater to what our clients have been asking for. So we had to stop development on these applications in order to very quickly, and it's been three weeks and we've hoping to have um, the return to office app ready for you guys to have in a templated format. If it was just producing that, we could do that quickly, but to get it to a templated format that you guys just upload a couple of spreadsheets and the app is ready to go, takes a tad more time. But the training app is definitely coming soon. The marketing app um, uh, is nearly finished. The multi-event app could be done by next week. 
um, that's really useful for, for when events start coming back on or if you're looking to do some virtual events. Uh, and our crisis response, again, that's been a massive boom in advising clients and staff on how they should respond to certain things and how to communicate with them outside of email um, uh, in, in terms of a crisis. So quick summary, why choose prefab? Well, first of all, it works on every device. So why wouldn't you want to have something that works across every device and give your end users the option? You don't need to have any maintenance. We take care of all of the maintenance for you. It can be used by developers, but non-developers as well. You get both parts, the visual aspects and the people that understand the code can work together on one platform. And I love this. The only way of writing less, less bugs is writing less code. Well, we've got 50 other law firms plus a number of other customers all using the same components as you. They're the ones that are testing it and have been using it constantly for the last five years at least. So the chances of there being bugs is a lot less if you're not using custom code. We offer unlimited applications. You don't need to get a new PO or get new budget every time you want to produce a new app. You just go in and you produce their unlimited plans available, which of course is going to save you money in the long run. And of course, it's time you can so quickly produce applications now whereas before no application was less than three months nowadays it's kind of a three-month planning process a three-month build only to find out that actually that isn't what the client was looking for so being able to build a proof a prototype or a proof of concept within a matter of days get it in the hands of the client only for them to tell you what they don't want at least you're moving towards what they do want Great, okay, questions. Uh, Noah, have we had any questions in from the people on the call? Not as of yet, uh, yeah. No, good, I've done an excellent job then of, uh, of educating everyone on, on Flipflip. Well, in that case, guys, thank you ever so much. We do have uh, some more webinars coming up. So on the 11th of June is all about our new code library. Uh, we also have uh, um, one coming up about integrations. More and more firms are integrating with things like uh, HiQ, like Neo to Logic, uh, like Brighter. So we're going to talk through some of them solutions and how you can get two different solutions, one plus one to give you three. Um, and then we're doing one with one of our partners, Meridian West, talking about uh, the benefits and, and power of marketing applications. So you can go to flipit.com webinars and you can see all the previous webinars that we've done, plus uh, up and coming webinars for you to register for. Or you can simply email sales at Flip it or respond to myself or Noah if you've got our email addresses.